We, we have cultures in my lab that, that are half a century old, uh, and you, when you freeze them, they, they don't age, they just sit there. Uh, and you can, you can have children that, that should really have been born 30 years ago, but were frozen. That is proof that you can stop time and stop aging. Um, but how do we do it in our own bodies? We don't want to have to freeze ourselves. And what Ali is talking about in terms of re rejuvenation with uh, cloning and what we do in my lab for rejuvenation of tissues and, and even uh, whole animals now is we don't change the DNA. The DNA in our bodies is rather intact. We used to think that our DNA was the problem. You've probably heard of the mutation or free radical theory of aging. That's not so true because you can take an old cell and make a new, new animal. What really is going on, I believe, is that there's another type of information that causes aging that's lost over time. And that's not genetic, but epigenetic information. These are the systems of how this DNA is bundled in the cell and controls which genes are turned on and off. And that reader system of the DNA is, I believe, largely what goes wrong during aging and what needs to be reset in the rejuvenation process. Yeah, I think this is really significant. I didn't mention what this was. I'm not a biologist, but it's my understanding this is a human cheek cell. But the significant thing is there's a nucleus, and there's DNA in the nucleus. And we all, if we understand it or not, know that there's a human genome, there's DNA in the nucleus. But you're saying, and I, I think this is really a pivotal sort of moment of understanding, that there is no gene for aging, that aging is epigenetic. It comes from what happens around the genome. Would that be? Ex yeah, exactly. And, and we used to think that DNA was our destiny. Well, that's not true. When it comes to aging and your chance of dying from certain diseases, it's only 10% is from your parents' genetic. The rest is epigenetic. And epigenome, the epigenome in each cell can be changed. Depends on what you eat, whether you exercise, whether you smoke, uh, and whether you've taken a medicine or a supplement. The epigenome is modifiable, which is why I say we can treat aging. In fact, we can probably reverse aging in the next five to ten years. And that's why aging should be considered a medical condition that's treatable, because we can treat it. And when we do that, then diseases like heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer will be pushed much further into the future. But consider this, if there's a universal cause of aging, such as the loss of epigenetic information, like the reader of the DNA, then the same pill or injection that prevents heart disease will also prevent Alzheimer's and diabetes and all the other diseases of aging, which is why I think that's a better place to put your money than to try and treat diseases that are the end result of the process. Because then it's, first of all, often too late, but also that medicine is not going to help you with other diseases, which are all going up exponentially with time. And that's why even if you cure a disease in an old, in an old person, they're going to die in a few years because something else will kill you, because you're not addressing the root cause of the problem.